Globalists want a 21st century China and a weakened United States. They want to erode your constitutional freedoms. I am very concerned about this country. I want to be left alone. I just want to, you know, ha have a happy and prosperous life for everybody and just be left alone because I believe in self-determination. I don't believe in a nanny state. But throughout my family's history, going all the way back to 1790 in this country, we stood up when duty called to fight for this country. All the way back to 1790. So I want people to realize, I say this with trepidation, because I just want a normal life. Pursue medicine, help people that had similar situations as my brother when he, he, he died from heart disease, to try to prevent others from dying from heart disease. That's what I wanted. But I wasn't given what I wanted because I was thrown in middle of this, this, this crisis that we call the Wuhan virus, the CCP virus, the USA CCP virus. And after long investigations and deep investigations, we had a rogue government that made a virus and outsourced it and offshored it to China. And they leaked it to bring down us and the weak in the world to allow for a 21st century China because Trump was guaranteeing that the 21st century China was not going to take place because he was rebuilding up the military in the Pacific to check, to prevent, to block President Xi's ambitions with Taiwan and Hong Kong. If you think I'm wrong, then I want you to roll back the tape the moment that they called for Biden as president-elect, the mainstream media, and how businesses that were globalists, transnational capitalists, and the media spun it, like Bloomberg, like Fox, like MSNBC, like CNBC, like CNN. First day in office, Biden is going to undo everything that Trump did because everything that Trump does is wrong. Foreign Affairs has an expose on, on Biden and how America is going to lead in the world. But let me tell you this. Trump did not start a war like Obama did and brought down Gaddafi. And, and tore up Syria. Fact. Nor did he let the guys in Benghazi bit overrun like Hillary Clinton did. Trump has been trying to de-escalate the never-ending war in the Middle East that started with Desert Storm. When I was an undergrad, a freshman, an undergrad at Wayne State University, it's never ended. And I am 48 years old. So Trump basically said to the brass, the military brass, get the hell out of the Middle East. You don't need to be there for so long. But they reverberate and say it's complicated because it's a never-ending annuity for the revolving door to a CE to, to a board position for these four-star generals the real game is in the Pacific but they don't want to fight in the Pacific because they want a 21st century and a half the United States drawn in to a never-ending war in the Middle East and weaken us 
just how the British Empire was weakened because they spent too much money in military. In the military, for their military excursions to maintain their, their empire. And as their bond market was starting to, to become too heavy in terms of debt relative to the GDP of the nation, they had a retreat. And this is what's going to happen with the United States. We're lucky because we're more productive than the UK. We're bigger than the UK. We have more resources than the UK. More American grit than the UK. But they are trying to attack our strengths. And that is self-determination, our constitution, and our economic prowess. Biden wants to tear down the wall. The Democratic Party wants a decash society. They want a regional economic zone between North and, and, and South America and Central America with the United States. That's the Amero. This was contemplated during the Lehman crisis under Geithner when he was the Treasury Secretary. Now let's go to the Federal Reserve just recently. The chairman of the, of, of the Dallas region of the Federal Reserve was stating that the next two quarters is going to be bad because of, of the coronavirus. Because there's going to be people going into sheltering, forced by the government, because we, we have more confirmed cases and hospitalizations now. That's a problem. Like I said, confirmed cases, I'm not too worried about. But when you start having hospitalizations, then you have a problem. But I'll say that I'll say more about that later. But the Federal Reserve, the Dallas Fed, is spinning it. Where the only way out of this is a, is a vaccine, so we can calm markets down. It's going to hurt the GDP when we shelter in place. That's obvious because look at what's happened for the last year. But once we have that vaccine out, then it'll be okay. That's what they're, how they're spinning it. And what does Biden say? And what's projected on CNN? Mandated masks and mandated vaccines. And then just a couple days after he's he's decided by the mainstream media that Biden is president elect which he's not but that he's president elect Pfizer comes out with data Eli Lilly comes out with data This is scary It seems as though we have the potential of being forced a vaccine that happens to be a messenger RNA vaccine. And everyone knows that the messenger RNA vaccines have never had long-term testing. We do not know the long-term effects of messenger RNA vaccines in the body. It is unknown. But we're going we're gonna to have this mass mandate? That's scary. That's very scary. This country is in danger. We're going to start seeing our constitutional freedoms erode. 
And that erosion is going to be the loss of our biological freedoms, forced vaccines, being forced to stay at home, not being able to conduct business. There's going to be higher taxation because of the, the, the hole that these states have been put in financially. But they'll try to maintain all their social services that maybe need to be cut or completely abolished. And if the citizens don't like it, then we need to curtail you. We need to surveil you. With AOC's little mention about Trump supporters needing to be put on a list, this sounds like fascism. This is something that Hitler would do. This is something that Mao would do. You don't like us, therefore we're going to put you on a list. That sounds like what happened to my family members. The Jewish people had to go through something very similar back in World War II. You're put on a list. You're watched. You can't have a, you can't have a business. You're put into a ghetto. Then all of a sudden they say, your life will be better, but you have to get on the train. And that train ended up going to a death camp. And there's not enough Republicans willing to fight. A fair count is all what we ask for. And if there was in anything that was improper, it needs to be thrown out so we can have a fair count, a fair election. And whoever wins under a fair system, the whole country can galvanize around. If Biden wins fairly, then he's our president. Doesn't mean I have to like him. Doesn't mean I have to like his policies, but he would be our president. But if he gets in as a president by stealing the election, then we had a coup. Under the, under the, the veil of an election. We have to prevent this Bio-Patriot Act happening. And it's happening in front of our eyes. And it's going to accelerate under a, under a, a Biden-Harris administration. We're going to lose hegemonic power. He's going to restart TPP. That's not more jobs for Americans. That's less jobs. And Trump proved it. Because everyone was saying that if you were going to tax tariff, if you're going to have tariffs and tax trade between China and the United States, that the American worker would lose, that it would be hyperinflation in the United States. That didn't happen. Actually, we had low inflation and we had record employment. Trump proved that fair trade is good. Free trade is bad for America. It's only good for the elitists that have the position like a transnational capitalist would. So we're going to start a grassroots movement to try to save this country. That grassroots movement, grassroot movement is is starting right now. We are going to try the best that we can to fight the power, the deep state, the ones that have been trying to take away our freedoms, 
the reality of the situation is this. Scorecard was implemented. Hammer was implemented. They implemented it overseas to overthrow elections and they implemented it here. That means you have an unelected government running the show. It's called the deep state. And that needs to be destroyed. The deep state existed before 9-11. The deep state was around, probably around Eisenhower's time. Because he hinted on it. He warned us. But so, so did JFK. And remember, JFK became the president after Eisenhower. The CIA is out of control. And other agencies that ballooned out right after 9-11 are out of control. That is what we're seeing here. And they'll play, play the Republican and the Democrats to whatever suits them at that moment in time. So it's really not a battle between the Republicans and the Democrats. It's really a, the battle between constitutionalists in the deep staters. We're going to have to take back our country and destroy, abolish the things that Eisenhower and JFK warned us about. We have to have confidence in our legal system our legislative system, and our executive system. And we have to have free press. But the free press isn't happening. There's censorship for citizen journalists. Because it's hard to control the citizen journalist. It's easy to control the mainstream media because of advertiser do dollars, or corporations being owned by certain people or certain groups. They're captured. The citizen journalist isn't captured. So if you really want the pulse of the nation and where it's really at, independent of if you're right or left, listen to the citizen journalists. Listen to the people that are publishing on YouTube and Twitter. That's the real pulse. Not what's on MSNBC. Not, not what's on CNN. CNN is the polished version of what the deep staters, the New World Order, 